but they would they would write it down and they will tell you if you have an accident and it's your fault we're canceling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they made it very clear but they had a great insurance i remember back in the 80s this one kid what corvette he was probably 19. Six month premium was four thousand dollars minimum. I was gonna say, yeah. Woo! I said, uh, maybe I'll sell that car because you can't afford to drive. And this this kid was on the roll to continually having uh, the only way he was speeding tickets. You can see the patterns, yeah. But he happened to be the son. But the only I worked in the ag department. He happened to be the son of one of our commercial accounts, and so yeah. But. That's who you had to buy your insurance for. Yeah. You had a quarter of that. Yeah. It was expensive elsewhere. But you're right. A lot of the your your comment was customer service. I used myself. I, I went with Costco and everybody I know now has Costco. And it's it's not your number one concern as a customer. Well Because I, you ha you can service yourself. It, it's on price, period. Pretty much. But I know that's just what the, I got to with you guys. The services is the service is no different than when you go in and take something back to Costco. I don't know if you're a Costco member. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually Costco. They're insured the same way. Cool. They they just don't challenge you. Good, good. Because I've heard things about like Geico challenging tooth and nail not to not pay out. Hmm. I've never heard that, but I I've heard, heard, heard it too. Have you, but I've never had a problem with them. And I've had them a lot over there. As a matter of fact, my mother, that was her first job. Oh, wow. When, before it became public, was working for Geico. Yeah. When I priced started. them out, Geico was is just, just enough higher than Costco. I guess. Costco. Oh, Costco, yeah. But they would have been my second choice. Yeah. Well, my boys got insurance when they were 16, 17, uh, we ended up going with Geico because they, they had a lot better premium. It was still $130 a month, but it was a better premium for kids between, you know, up to 21 or 25. And yeah, the coverage was there. And the coverage was there. Oh, and now, they all, Excuse me. now they're all to Costco. Yeah. For a 18 year old to 21 to go out and get car insurance is pretty expensive. They go to Costco, it's it's a fourth of the price of any other insurance, Geico or anybody else. That's good. But, Any time for a break, because I'm going to go buy Yes. I wish I could sell insurance for the <laughs> poor IDS at Costco, so I could make a ton of money. Take a minute break. But yeah, no, all of theirs is, you know, their advantage, when I talked to Grant, uh, their big advantage was they didn't have to have a on agency, they didn't yeah. have to pay the over they didn't have to pay the commissions. No. So it's yeah, all through the internet. Oh, yeah. But there again, you talked about commissions. Because the agencies now, especially are expected to do so much of their own work, you got to go online and put your own quote and stuff. Commissions are coming down. Yeah. yeah, the commissions went down. And you hey, know, what, you your hours online or more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, oh, no, this is different. What do I do if the door's not open? Knock. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll let you in, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think I came across a guy who sells for IDS. I was just trying to find his card, but I just remember seeing IDS in the corner. Bag? No, he was around here. Uh, his card said uh, because it came from a, a dental office, and it was a dental provider specifically for dental. Uh, uh, but I remember seeing IDS up in the corner. IDS might, and it might be a different oh, subsidiary, yeah, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to get the card and see if it did say that. Well, if you have insurance, it doesn't. You know, call that number. It's kind of interesting to you. Yeah. Cost you mean cost is American? Yeah, why they're able to do that is because they're working out with a phone bank. 
So if you call this number, you get, during the day, you get IDS in Green Bay. If you call after <coughs> closure hours, you get Las Vegas a phone ring. Yeah. And they, so they don't, like I was telling her, they don't have an agency, they don't have to pay permission. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Because their customer service better be on point then. Because as a consumer, I actually want a brick and mortar based agency with an agent who can speak to me face to face about my coverage um, and go to bat for me if I ever need it. But, but the face to face discussion about my coverage, yeah. I need as a consumer. You don't need. Because you're an insurance agent, you know the verbiage and, yeah. the, and the line items. And I don't know these things. Yeah, and people that. Because unless IDS can make me understand it over the phone, yeah. I need a brick and mortar. Which I think Geico has not done well at. Geico will sell you a policy without ever discussing the fact that if you total another car, you will be on the hook. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this is minimum coverage, and you don't have enough coverage to crash your car harder than a fender bender. <laughs> and so let's talk about something higher than state minimums here. Because, of course, I want to sell you more, so maybe I have that discussion. But, but I feel like if I'm really serious about my insurance coverage, I need someone to talk to face-to-face. -face. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I, I, I was... Yeah, I used to be that way, but I... Well, because you're unique, you're, you're, you're an both, agent. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah, I, I, as an end user customer, I, I need that. When I, when I have friends or people that want to switch, I say, well, bring me your policy, you know, and, and then you read that across to your, to whoever you are, and you make sure they match it up. And usually yeah. they match it up and they give you a whole bunch more for... Yeah, usually to, uh, for them for to match... For more than... You know, if you're usually for a company to match a foreign than 50 company, percent on your premium. Yeah, well, oh, that's price yeah. because, but with coverage too. But coverage is it's un usually better. Yeah, oh, usually better. better. Yeah, because for a company to match some foreign company's coverage, it usually means we we don't have that exact amount of coverage as they do, but we have more or less. And so yeah. to match it, we're giving you more. Yeah, yeah. And, and certain states require a certain amount of coverage. Yeah. Well, there's, there's no state minimum policy for any insurance premium that is enough. Well, that, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, the, the Oregon never, has an insurance minimum on, on my vehicle, but that is not enough for me to crash into a wall. Yeah. No. Oregon, <laughs> Oregon is very low. Yeah, exactly. Oregon's like one of the lowest. But, uh, you know, when I had that fire, now, they, their, their agent is in Portland. They don't keep a lot of agents. And he came down, you know, he looked at the garage and, you know, there's a shell of a BMW and a shell of a totally. brand, new, brand new Honda Accord. Yeah, totally. it. <laughs> yeah, well, there was no much, not much doubt about that one being replaced. Yeah. yeah. So those were easy ones for, yeah. for him. Yeah. You know, two weeks later, write the check and they're, they're used to that. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, but but they, that that one was big enough and important Those enough for that for them to pay the the small amount of stuff yeah. as far as his salary and the fuel to get there to come look at it. Yeah, the carrier wanted some representation. They say, yeah. go get pictures of this and make sure we're actually paying always, for a car. Yeah, you always, <laughs> yeah, you always want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah, the adjuster. Well, sometimes it's so small that they don't even need the adjuster. Write the check. Yeah, five hundred bucks or, or five thousand dollars, write the check, you know. Um, but yeah, you're yeah, it's 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 devastating. Yeah, you get an ethics and everything, I'll share I'll, I'll share you a very good story for you. Because when you got into ethics, uh, that was negative. I'll, I'll Sure, the owner of the agency did not want you to be focused on ethically providing service to the customer. They wanted you to sell the policy. I've never been there. Oh, good. Never, I thought that's where you're going. I've never been there with this this owner. Good. In fact, now that it's done and he's away from that, we wrote. Uh, I did not know her. She did, and she was 
I think people in Salem York, <coughs> she had came in and wanted a life insurance policy. And we, I can't say we, he knew her diagnosis. And the diagnosis hadn't been disclosed, recorded yet. Um, and uh, couldn't look it up. She was, she was going to die of cancer, period. And he wrote, uh, it was unethical. Now I'm in your office without disclosing it. He did a great thing. Oh. He wrote the life insurance for her for like a million and a half or two million, two million and a half bucks. And to this day, you know, I, I can't tell you names or anything <laughs> right. else. He wrote it. She died. Was it unethical? The life insurance. Yeah, it was. If I but didn't tell it that, to you. Don't take that to the grave. What if I that didn't that tell it to you and you couldn't look it up? It was a great thing for him to do. It was unrecorded, so I couldn't look it up, and I didn't tell it to you. That Everything I just did by writing the policy was my job. Totally ethical. Yeah. But I, if, he, if I knew, then that is that's technically unethical. But but your your acceptance of it makes it yeah. a little more okay yeah. in your head. Oh no, which really? thing are we on? Oh, he's talking. He's oh, he's just sharing a great now. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I see that first one there about Carrie stopped selling. What they do now is they put a moratorium on. There's fires, uh, moratorium. You can't write in these areas. Earthquakes, can't do it for. Define reason. the word moratorium for. That me. means you cannot find coverage. For 30 days or whatever on that type of business after an incident and that's when people call yes I need some earthquake insurance uh sorry you after the wait. earthquake Floods, whatever I, I, yeah you know yeah. i did the same thing yeah. a couple of years ago and you know i lived out south salem and actually it was it was <laughs> from an ethical class it took a couple of years because in some cases you can call and up your coverage after something's happened well it's, it's six months on flood insurance okay right but i'm thinking Man, this place just flooded uh, <laughs> a year ago. You want to buy flood insurance? So then I, I you know, I went down to. It's a good insight. To the young lady that bought the business down here, I said, you know, I think maybe next year we need to buy flood insurance just because you know things are going to happen in Oregon eventually, but who knows when? There's no, there's not many people who can tell me the earthquake won't happen anymore. Yeah. And I'm going, what's more important, flood insurance or earthquake? Well, at that, that time it was flood insurance. Yes. Said, okay, when it rolls around, it was 150 bucks a year. It wasn't that much. She didn't get a call back and I didn't buy it. But you were talking about There could be a day that she widely regrets But there's that. a six month. You know, if I want to buy a flood insurance, I can't wait till it floods. <laughs> no. We're getting something every day regarding fires. And, and just because in this area, blah 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 blah. Moratoriums, and now here in the valley, we face a um, like flood, specifically earthquake. The likelihood is so high now that they are now capping policies, restricting policies. Yeah. I bought my earthquake insurance at a coverage rate that you can't get anymore because now they now they've lowered the coverage, raised the cost, and some carriers don't even have earthquake insurance to provide. Age of your building, you know. Yeah. Well, it's so like, factors. Yeah, it's like farmers. They don't, you know, they don't write any insurance. And it's something in specific I've noticed with earthquake. They stay away from certain regions. All of our insurance. Oh yeah. Do. I can't tell you uh, groundwater or, or hurricane insurance. Well, as a carrier, I'm not going to do that in Florida because it won't make my business money. Well, yes, you can, but you don't pay. <laughs> yeah. Go away to pay. Honey. Yeah. Well, then why are they not? writing home policies in Louisiana still. Right, right. Yeah. I well, mean, isn't got, there money to be made there? Well, no, because Here everybody pockets would drive. Two and three. What's that guy's name? Leafs, Leafs, Leafs. Leafs, auto oh, body. Every time I hear him. I love having a discussion about him. Mack him around. What a lion sack well, you, shit. Sorry. Tell me no, about no, it. Three years ago, they went through the lawsuit up there. Yeah. 
You read about him online, he's not very ethical. <laughs> but he sure makes his commercials. Well, he's got his and your, your person who doesn't know anybody is going, oh, God, I'm not going to make sure. The commercials very much lend to him being on my side as yeah. an end user consumer. Yeah. yeah. But you're right, there's, there's some underlying, not just tones there, but underlying facts <laughs> that are being told. <laughs> What do you think about lakes there, Mike? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. I wouldn't send anybody to them, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, because I know the backstory. But there's a lot of people that <clears throat> don't know that history. Hmm. <coughs> well, and put they the history that commercial on TV and they, oh, they got to be good. Yeah. Exactly. All the history aside and insight, knowledge, and, and, and uh, experience um, set all aside, the content, the way Lafe's advertises advertises himself and his business, is it unethical? No. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just advertising. I mean, any advertising on TV is... He has pitted himself against you, which means you are never going to send him a referral. But 100% of his advertising is geared towards me, the unuser. Yeah, yes. Uh, I am your customer, but I need lace during your claim that I need in our service agreement here. Yeah. And you know what? He is talking to me, not and he says, screw you guys. <laughs> when you used to have to submit on, on an auto claim, you used to have to submit two estimates from two different places, and the company would usually pick the cheaper one. And this is all now, an effort to... it's you go where you want, mm -hmm. yeah. and you submit it, and the insurance company. Yeah. They're not necessarily always going to pay the amount, because their adjusters say that it, I still have to approve it. Cheaper. As the insurance carrier, I still have to approve this crazy estimate or this crazy body shop. Well, yeah. but back then, they they try and combat favoritism by saying, "I want two estimates, and but we'll pick one." Reason, but, but there was part of a reason for doing that because because there's also business partners. Oh, I've been in Salem for a long time. Ninety-four. Hey, I mean, Kaiser. I started up in Portland in '79. Okay. When Farmers Insurance Group, when they were in Salem in the '60s and '70s, and many other insurance groups owned their body shops. That is the difference. They owned the body shops. Was that unethical? No, that was a business practice. Well, because if I'm an insurance carrier... From 1942, when they do away with the two or three estimates in the 80s. Late 80s. Because we they sold them. Your car got wrecked. Guess what? You, you, you had have to two to, to three estimates. But it always ended up. Oh, because the, the body shop owned by the insurance carrier is always cheapest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does that happen? Well, because now, I mean, they all did good work. I, I, I agree. Well, I guess I guess they're making it ethical by saying we're going to be the cheapest, but get two other estimates also. Because is that ethical? If I sell you your insurance, and then when you need to act upon your insurance that I'm selling you, you also have to use my other service. Is that ethical? Because that's what Laves is accusing you of. It's a hard question. That's what Laves is accusing really you of. Old, old. Because yeah, that's. But well, I that 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 Laves says don't long, take the insurance long. referral. They're 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 scheming gamers, and they're going to put unworthy parts in your car. That's yeah. what they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's the most unethical of all. <laughs> so now, what do I? You know, if I had an accident now, uh, if I had an accident, I would go to the manufacturer. I would go with yes. Capsule. Oh, right, give me an estimate. Yeah. Go down and to the local. Go down to the local new car lot that sells your brand new car. collision on commercial is outstanding, but they're doing a lot of their cars and everything else. 
a guy and his two sons out there doing phenomenal work. Most, a lot of people know it. So I go out and get an estimate from him. Well, I know. I know that Capshio or Power or anybody else is going to be sky high. Yes. Because they're all going to come in and say, well, we're going to put original parts. Original parts, they pay here. those guys a lot. And they don't. Well, who else? I would hope so if I went to my Toyota dealer. You would hope they do. Yeah. Some parts they do. But they're going to be higher. Yeah, which makes maybe the insurance carrier want to prove it. Yeah. But I, I want original parts and save parts. It, it's, a, it's, it's a crazy game because these business relationships aren't always unethical either. Uh, How did we get on I want you guys to refer us as SurPro. Be, not because your customer will always, or not because I'm going to save you money on the claim loss ratio, but because I'm going to make sure your customer reflects the claim process good on you. The customer is going to think a claim isn't so bad because SurfPro is awesome and, and my insurance agency is even better because they sent me SurfPro. Yeah. Um, it's not. Uh, but we are well, we there. can make suggestions, but we can't make people. Right, they're they're even like he said. They're steering you yeah. away from referrals even completely now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's just because the insurance carrier has a preferred body shop doesn't mean that that's in in detriment to the customer. No, that means there's structured pricing. That means that there's there's service levels that are expected. But but this is a good thing. But again, that was then. That's not now. Well, the, I, I try and create it change, every day but, with SurfPro in your home. I try and create it every day. Well, you, you I, have a presence on media as well. Yes. Service Master, SurfPro. Yeah. You people mm -hmm. are all out there now, where in the old days, I never heard about restoration. Right. On TV. Yeah. Right. So right. the wide public is also aware that, oh, hey, you know, these guys say they do this, so maybe I'll give them a shot. And they're the yeah. ones that will bring it up. Yeah. Well, what if, I, what if I'm... Uh, XYZ restoration company and your customer needs to file a claim and they call me to go over there and, and restore their water damage and I treat them horribly and their service is bad and I left mold in their home. Well, all that is very much your problem now as an insurance carrier. Yeah. Uh, my customer is, is going to leave because of the service that was provided. It's your customer. I'm just servicing them. They are not my customer. They are your customer, the agents and the carriers. Yeah, especially when they're paying the bill. Yeah, that's how I have to approach those situations. If you as the carrier are paying the bill, that is the customer's loss, but it is not my customer. It is your customer. <laughs> yeah, and, but because if I do a good job, they're like, yeah, sure, Surpro's great, but my insurance carrier, they're awesome. They sent me Surpro in an hour. You know, and then SurPro got it all, and they know SurPro, they got these great friends going on. Yeah, the, the, the body shop, that they were great. They fixed my car, and, and, but that looks good on you guys. Gifts, can we can we have a conversation about gifts and what might be right or wrong to create these? I got these? flowers. There were flowers, right? Is it unethical for me to try and gain your referrals by taking you to lunch and having a conversation like this? Uh. Yeah. It's unethical? No, it's not, not oh. unethical. It, it, it's unethical. No, there are standards yeah. that are bare. You can take people to lunch and, and Is it unethical you know, for me to gifts and things like that for everything? Yeah. Well, because that I mean that's that's what surprise me does do a lot of the time is I'll go and have, sit down with an insurance agent or carrier or adjuster and And your competitors do too. Exactly. Right? In, in, in all, and lines, I will pay for all the lines of business. Look what we're doing today. Yeah. And, and I will pay for the meal. I provided yeah. you food today. Yeah. I'm providing you value by giving, helping you maintain your license. Right. Yeah. Is it unethical for me to try and gain your business and your referrals by sending you on a cruise? Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like uh, John Brown pay, trying to pay me $500 to bring his policies down. I don't have any control over it. All right, I'll give you $500 under the table. Sucking my commission out. If you can cut it off my bill. <laughs> I, I worked for an agency for a year in Portland. And this is what they would do. My account executive had 10 accounts. 
because they wrote all these huge contractors, Arizona and that area that what she would do is when the policy would come in, she'd white out and she'd change the figures so it was lower. But what happens when the audit comes in, they, uh -oh. they still gotta pay that other part she wiped out, plus yeah. now the audit Oh, I, I actually walked out, I typed up a you presentation on a Friday <laughs> yeah. and put it on Before the stuff hit the fan. And I said, I'm out of here. I, <laughs> yeah. I can't work like this. That, fan, that, that, that stuff will spread so wide that oh. when it hits the fan that everybody will be affected. Oh. <laughs> yeah. right. We just got audited and everyone's well, going to get audited. They went out of business a couple of years later because the boss, who was a playboy, was using the customer money to go on his little Vegas trips and stuff like that. So, yeah. When you don't reinvest in your own business and you're just having fun with the yeah. money of the profit, then yeah. you're not going to do so well. Now there was a day where the sexual harassment, because when he talked to a woman in the office, he talked to her boobs, <laughs> and he never knew your name. Does it create the best work environment, no. does it? No. no. Does it create a productive work environment? Does it create a work environment where you think you have job security because the boss is going to go to jail and then the company is going to go <laughs> under, you know, stuff like that. So, but the really only clear line between me buying you lunch and me buying you a cruise is the denomination. Right. How much it costs. Where's the line then? Where is that line? Well. Is it is it before 50 and, and, and under under 200? Or yeah, where, like why is there a line in there that no one can really identify? Um, if sending you on a cruise there, is unethical, why is why I've never been an agency owner, I would know. There, <laughs> there's clear state. There's clear there, line there, item there policies these lines. days. Um, state Farm has things that say I can't spend more than fifty bucks on you, right. or or you as the agent can't accept it. I can do it, but you shouldn't be accepting it. Yeah, and that's State Farm policy. When I worked for Boise Cascade, of course, we, <clears throat> every year. We had to go through uh, sexual harassment training after like the 90s. And you had to sign off on ethics and everything else. And the ethics, I can remember one of the questions, you were able to accept. Uh, Is it true or false? <laughs> no, it was when you signed off that you were able to accept, I think it was $50 or less, which it's means kind of it was a bouquet or, or something like yeah. that. Um, I can buy you a pretty good meal for 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. But I always question. And that doesn't mean I bought your referrals. Right. But I, I have think no the way they determined that $50 would not sway you to take this company over this company because $50 is nothing. I hope my value does that though. Because yeah. I, because I'm yeah. buying you the lunch, hopefully to show you that you should choose me over my competitor. Yeah. I still want to get that across, but that's you still don't have to. See, on my end of it, the flowers were thanking me. Yes. For okay. yes. Right. Wow. Which is a great approach. Yeah. yeah. Very good approach. Yeah. Thanks for the referral. No. Thank right. you for writing my insurance and making it something I could afford and finding me a company because I've been having such a hard time. Oh, okay. So, is there a difference between gifts, gifts and gratuities from the customer, or gifts and gratuities from a vendor, a needed vendor, like myself in in the insurance world? Yeah. Because I was talking about from vendors, I don't know. but I didn't think about vendors. customers. That's what I was saying. You would yeah, have I didn't a customer think come in and say, "Hey, if I do this for you, would you give me a better oh, lower rate, yeah. et cetera, et cetera?" The only way an agent can do that yeah. is to play with figures like this gal did. Or to which is take against the in law. That yeah. yeah. Which is against the law. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is against the law. Yeah. Does it happen? No. Yeah. Right. I, I haven't well, seen it happen in my office, uh, this office, or the one I. Okay. That's good. Writer, yeah. It's, it's, never, it's never happened yeah. to me either. I've always thought about. Uh, Any company that's going to survive today is going to have to have a very high standard of ethics. Yeah, you shouldn't have seen very much of it, and if you have, it's been on a very small scale. The individual who wipes it out, but she's doing it on her own without outside influence. Yeah, a company. Yeah. My last job from here when I worked there 15 years, Rex Ryder and Tom Barley were the owners. And Rex Ryder, he was total ethics 100%, and he would never even, I mean, and we became close over the years. I was working with him and stuff. And uh, I'm Italian. We hugged. 
Okay? Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't let me do that until about a couple years before I left. Right? When I left. And I said, you know what? If anybody's going to be brought up on sexual harassment charges, it's probably going to be me. <laughs> but, but I mean, he was to the letter, and I really enjoyed working with him. It's one of the reasons because he's I didn't successful. have to work. Yeah, I didn't have to worry about you know trying to make a decision: should I do this or should I do that? You you would, you I would I would leave a job if it went against my ethics. If you had to decide whether or not, uh, if, if, if you ever had to consider whether it was right or wrong, yeah, you shouldn't have to, you should always be, do the right thing, and that's what my boss wants me to do, yeah. the right thing. Yeah, but that, that is correct. Most carriers, you know, there's usually a written. There are, there's tons of them. For farmers, and it goes across all things, like, what about promotional material? For farmers, just recently in the last couple of years, I'm not even allowed to leave um, anything in a farmer's office. Any of my material, like pens or any of this, I can't even leave this in their office for them anymore. Wow. Oh, like farmers insurance? Yeah. It, it's, they're only allowing their own promotional material in there now. I can give this to the agency owner, but he can't put it out for a customer. He can't leave it out on the desk. Wait, well, you remember what I just said about farmers insurance? What what you said? Oh, yeah, with the magnets over there. The magnets over there. I think there's some policy that it, says that that's not really allowed. No, that may have changed in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think there's some policy that says because I'm not saying that I don't visit the <coughs> farmers office that oh, do have this out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's like, but we got the bulletin. I remember since working here, we got the bulletin, don't we, we don't want, we're farmers and we don't want your stuff. I, we got the bulletin. Yeah, we're farmers and we don't want your stuff, please don't bug your agents with promotional material. Saying, they don't provide the service, a service like yours. No, you provide the coverage, which enacts a claim, which creates a requirement for me, but like I said, it's still your customer. I don't think about that. Right? That's it. I love this boilerplate stuff, yeah. What, what gift is too large, yeah. I mean, there's a line there somewhere, but it's hard to define. Because what if I wanted to spend, uh, what if I wanted to send you to a concert or a sporting event? And that's going to cost more than $100 now. We're talking hundreds of dollars. Is that ethical? I have to. <laughs> right? It's hard, right? Think about that. Because I've been across all those. Because there's answers. Yes, I take people to sporting events. Right. We used to have a suite over here in the Volcano Stadium, yeah, space baseball. Here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I take people. It's, there's a line somewhere. And these things can be defined, whether you look in the specific policy procedures of a specific carrier. You can tell whether she should be or shouldn't be here. But you don't have to worry about it so much. But just don't go over the top. Don't yeah, send I don't, me on I don't a cruise. Know where the lines are. Like you said, yeah. you got sporting there. We what when I was in the office over there, they paid for the winter hawks. Yeah. So you pick up a winter hawks program and it's got farmers insurance in there. Sponsorship. And they spent plenty of money up there and God, you know, maybe right. 60, 70 tickets a year we would give away to anybody and everybody that wanted to go, now, they may not be able to afford them, but we gave them out. A hundred percent. We do yeah, the get around uh, that stuff. Watch insurance companies. Get around all of that. You sell the most uh, policies, whatever, and they oh, send God. you on a cruise to Hawaii oh, yeah, or, yeah. yeah, all that crap. My bosses, if, when I was in Portland, were always going on those things. Yeah. And they were provided by the carrier. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Because they wanted context. Oh, well, this is with, this is internal. This is internal employees or, or representatives. No. This is Beaker Richard Ross sold the most life insurance for Aetna, and so they got to go on a cruise. Yeah. Beaker, Beaker, what their names are. Richard and Ross. Smiley. Richard and Ross are acting as representatives of that carrier right. and sold policies to me. on behalf of that carrier that made, they were technically the employers, the employees of that carrier. I can send my employees on a cruise. I can give my employees vacation time. I can give my employees extra value for their work. If you, if you, yeah. if you look at winning a contest is a great way to do it. 
I have a complaint because the CSR yeah. is going to go on a weekend in Sun River too. So, but, yeah, right. Yeah. The most yeah, internal stuff I don't think is unethical in any way. That's why I, I came to sitting here thinking. <laughs> if Servpro wanted to send me to Florida to just have a good time because I made the company a uh, million dollars this year or something, I would accept that. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Or can I? Can you just tag that onto my paycheck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. Right. Well. Well, because yeah, yeah. they pay me every week. Well, no. They'll put that in your gross. Yeah. You pay taxes. Yeah. Pay paycheck. taxes. But they pay me a paycheck. Yeah. The, the, it gets a little borderline. I mean, we write. Let's see who's going to be positive here. Every guard insurance out of Seattle is a very good. Insurance company, very good premiums. The the two guys up to well, one guy owns it now. Two guys own it. One guy's got a, a place up in Canada, a fishing resort. And you know, if if you end up selling a lot of insurance, and it, it, you're not trying to push policies, but if you end up selling a decent amount, there's a amount number on it, they'll invite you to go up fishing. It's an achievable goal. It's a very it's achievable, achievable goal. Is it, is it wrong? And no. Then, because sometimes it just comes down, and it come down, they'll say, okay, a couple of you people want to go. It may not be your top achiever. It might be somebody that didn't go the year before, or yeah. and then they go up. So is that acceptable? I don't have a problem with that. What can it be directly related to? Bonuses. Yes. Are bonuses okay? A fishing trip can be directly related to a mon monetary bonus every year. Companies give out bonuses all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah bonuses yeah. are totally ethical in my opinion. Yeah. I'll totally go on that fishing trip. I'm glad you appreciate my work. When I worked for Boise, we would, and I never questioned it. Um, I would go to Europe and buy equipment. I had, I had a really nice job. That's all right. And it, I didn't receive anything, but the trip down anymore, or fundamentally something changed that made me start doing worse. Yeah, yeah or something that made me start doing better. Because unless something fundamentally changes, in the millennial who gets laid off because they just show don't show up twice in a week out of five days, you know, your skills and uh, ability are not worth a raise or any more than the least amount of money I can pay you. Yeah. But I get also that there is <coughs> there is a differential between the lowest amount of money I can be paid for the minimum amount of skills and the cost of living. We've got cost of living way up here right now. Right. That doesn't mean I need to subsidize the bottom though. In my opinion. This is my opinion now. I don't need wages to be forced up by the government at the bottom because of the differential with the cost of living. We need to elevate these people out of the bottom by creating opportunity and, and getting them to build their skill level. My skills are worth something, but that's only because I made them that way. And, and if my only skill is flipping the burger down at McDonald's, I need to embrace that. And I will get a raise if I embrace that and I have good work ethic. And then I'm worth the raise. And then I'm worth the management position. Yeah, but not the people who, who expect to sit there. And well, it's as my father taught me. He says, no matter what your job you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. Yes. Make yourself successful in it. I've been a waitress. Yeah, my first job was Dr. Delmas. I've had some second great of crappy work. jobs. You know, but I still did the best I could. I always knew that when I left a job, I would get a good reference because yes. I did my job 100% and then some. Work history. Yes. Yeah, I've had some great So I have a jobs. lot of skills that I used in my life, too. You know? I was the McDonald's burger flipper. I did work the cash register at the convenience store. I, commercial fishing doesn't really count because that was actually the best time of my life. But, but that was a hard work. That was a dangerous, nitty gritty hard job to do. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, 
I wasn't ashamed of a single position I've ever found myself in just because it was minimum wage or, or I was treated like a grunt because I'm working on this boat, you know, and I don't like the way the skippers treat me. Well, actually, maybe I consider he's looking out for my life and just do what he says, right? Here, here's where my life has really helped me now because both my parents died. The states and probate, there's all this stuff to do. And all my siblings have agreed that I'm the one for the job because of my organizational skills, my research yeah. skills. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and appoint you to this. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a problem with it. And I'm fine because another nickname I have is Bossy. So. <laughs> what did he do? Yeah. But I, 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 I have the skills for the job. So. Yeah, and you're willing to take it on. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good because you you got to have the power of attorney. And all the all that's, good, that's good to have somebody there. Yeah. Well, would you guys believe that there's one in four adjusters that it would be said that one in four adjusters have acted on it unethically in the insurance environment? Sure. I got it. It's the question that's on this yeah. presentation. I didn't make this presentation, but yeah, everybody always says yeah. I, yeah of course. I had one yeah. come to mind, but I'm not. Really no, sure. please share because the next I'm going to ask now if it's such a quick yes to your head, share an example with me, please. It's one of my bosses. You know, he's been in the business for how many years? I won't tell Rick. It's okay. It's not. <laughs> it's, he still acts like a young agent doing anything and everything to get a piece of business in the door. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, when he's doing these things, you got to put down your standard of living a little bit so you're not putting yourself in this position. Oh, he's trying to drive business through the door out of necessity. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. he's overextended himself financially. Yeah. In a possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, whether it's my necessity trying to grasp at straws or it's successful sales the number one focus is sales yeah. it is in every office especially and i've heard that for so many years sales make the business and stuff but i'm off the other thing being on the customer service side of it and see leaving see people leave not because of price but because you're not getting service that they need we've had this personal lines position that keeps coming up is people fit it. Yeah. They have over. this face when the bosses are here and this other face yeah. when they're not around yeah. being heard and the complaints are rolling in, are rolling in. And I left your office because of so-and-so didn't do or this is how they talked to me or made me feel or whatever have you. So yeah, price is over here but there's also this end of it too. Value. And that's why CSRs, I have a CSR CIC, AAI, ACSR. We're all here toward customer service. These are licenses too. They care to, they, they've got they've got like accredited care. licenses. PhDs. They care insurance. about. Yeah. yeah, they care about what the service is like. <coughs> and I took psychology for three years. You can tell you can watch people circle the drain. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> mentally. yeah. Mentally. Because yeah. I also have to know that that angry person walking into my office, something else is going on out here. It's not necessarily, I'm the person that I is getting it, but it's not necessarily aimed at me. So I have to be able to talk back and talk them down, figure out, you know, what's going on, let them maybe spill a little bit and figure out what the problem is. But I can't get angry at them. That my my head could be red hot. I have exceptions, you know, you're not gonna cuss at me. There's certain things yes. I am not gonna accept. Because I'm still I'm still a, a, a gentleman and so yeah, you're right, I shouldn't be. <laughs> but I can walk I can walk in. I'm like, Sorry, hanging up. Yeah, sorry, you can't deal with that, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm still apologizing for hanging up on you, but that doesn't happen. Right yeah, now. yeah. So. My head could be as hot as it could be, and I walk in. But if you take that into consideration, you will all more than 80 percent of the time turn me around with a smile. Yeah. yeah, you knew that. I'm my head. You saw my head was hot, but you considered yeah, it's probably because something else is going on outside of that door that you just walked through, and he's gonna throw some shit at me right now. I can take that and I can make sure I do what he needs as, as his provider, right? He's my customer still, right? And that's what I love about SurfPro here is, is nobody calls us here at SurfPro with a smile on their face. No. no one calls us with a smile. They're all in distress. They're all in distress. Whether it's just a little tiny water or it was a fire, there's always a frown about some situation that's gone wrong. But every single customer, we strive very hard for every single customer to be done, to have a smile on their face when we're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's, that turnover is what I love, the, the, the frown to smile. But every other single class, 
that provides you guys with CE credits that I can teach every single other subject has a basis in sales. Every single other class, no, except right. ethics, yeah, yeah. except ethics and law. Ethics and law, you have to have three hours every two years on top of the all the other hours that are geared towards sales. Yeah. Ethics and law, because you can't. You can't do sales. Well, you can do sales unethically, but like now, okay, we need to be training ethics and law. And it's still minute, too, because you only need three hours of ethics on top of the 20 other hours that you need yeah. about water mitigation. So you know your customers can be helped by water mitigation. Well, maybe they figure this three hours is refreshing stuff you would learn at the meet. Yeah, well, right, because obviously something had to happen when Enron was running the show, and we had to pass legislative laws to, to the effort wasn't to bring them down as a company, but it was to regulate their ability to lie to the country. Yeah, yeah they had to have something to yeah. raise up the insurance rates. Yeah, <laughs> and it is now. It's an uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> insurance is affected by nearly every event. Anything. Serious. I'll yes. tell you what, when I started working in insurance April of 79, just using contractors as an example, oh my God, the wording on a certificate <laughs> from then to now, I mean, you know lawyers are sitting behind that because it's usually this long, whereas it was just, uh, I don't even remember having to use the word additional insured back then, <laughs> US certificate. Right. And the pricing, pricing was, you know, a couple hundred bucks, well, who had um, now I'm telling these people, why your case, eight thousand dollars, you know, well. <laughs> uh, insurance rates have gone up, but so have wages. Like I mean, because there's a lot. Of, we were talking about the minimum wage and how, personally, I disagree with. Have you ever made a buck fifty an hour? You, no, but but I've made minimum wages, wage. I've made a buck fifty an hour. <laughs> I've never lived tips? in when that was a minimum. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have to claim your tips back then. Oh, I tips. That's right. That's right. Because I will tip, because I appreciate tip environments, because I know they get paid less. But your tip is affected by if you throw your food, at, if you throw my food at me, yep. or stuff like that. Right, but but you will see. All you have to do is actually just talk to me straight and keep a smile on, and you don't my have to do much more. And I'll tip you goes, pretty good. How much should we tip? <laughs> well, it's a great tip too. If, you, if they're asking that question, they deserve it, right? Yeah. And so, but. Um, Oh, the, the, the minimum wage and, and I can't remember where I was going. A longtime customer brings a competitive product to your attention. He's your customer already. He, your customer has a need for this product that he wants to talk to you about, and the features and benefits of the product and its low cost make it superior to any product you could provide. He asks your advice on what to do. I say, do I want to keep my job? <laughs> you boil it down all the way to boilerplate. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is, because I've got my boss standing over here. What would you tell him? I've got, I, there's an insurance agency, they got this there's product. There's so many variables there. Yeah, right? Yeah, you know, I mean. But you had it all the way down to boilerplate, though. What's the ethical thing to do? The ethical thing to do is to tell them to take that. But the other one is, my boss is going to fire my ass if I keep doing that to people. Well, no. You can't necessarily tell him that I talked someone out of something that they needed. I just did yesterday. Because, okay, so let's say that you tell him that, let's say you talk him out of it, and he stays with you. And you, if you're good at your job, there's a record of this. Now he... There's a record that he asked about coverage that he walked out of your office without. If that loss ever happens, you're now liable because he wanted it and you didn't provide it. Yeah. Now you're liable, right? The ethical thing, most most ways we come up with it in this class, when I ask people, it, it is yeah, you have to take that product. If I can't provide it and it's something you need, you should take that product. We're an independent agent. We can buy all. Most of the right, because people I mean, walk out of our office is because of price. Yeah, the only and difference, or, the only way this would come up is because of price. Right. Yeah. And I, I just wrote a nice roofing account last year, um, who actually found better coverage elsewhere that I didn't have. I mean, better pricing elsewhere that I didn't have access to. Like I said, 
No, we're you, talking a couple thousand dollars. You did the right thing. He, he says, but so he kept the rest of his insurance with me. He says, and I'll check back with you again next year. Maybe the cut, maybe the savings <coughs> difference is worth your customer service. Yeah. I found a better price over here. And referrals. Yes. Yes, maybe, but I it's feel a lot. Yeah. yeah, I feel a lot about that. I am willing to pay the extra premium for someone who provides me their cell phone number. Uh, Which too could be this year that the cell is gone. Yeah. May I find out that the certificate of insurance I asked for didn't get done within the half an hour. It got done days later, and I lost the job or I didn't get paid. Uh, coverage I asked for maybe add take off equipment, vehicles, whatever happened, didn't get done. A gap he said might be a learning year for him. Yeah. Okay, I'll go back to Nancy because I knew right. that she yes. could do that. Yes, 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 yeah. Maybe because you can always, you, you know, I really appreciate your business. You should go take that other product because I can't provide it. But yeah, eventually, hopefully, they learn that your customer service was of worth more value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, and that's a, it's kind of a weird question, but it was a good one. We're gonna move through that. We still got a couple minutes for a break here. So let's just kind of tell you, now we're kind of moving on to talking about ethical conduct in the workplace. And so we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, independently owned and operated does not mean that either you're on your own in the business environment or that, that you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna so well what is expected of you as a business professional? These things can pretty much all be agreed upon, right? Yeah. yeah. Good judgment, honesty, respect of others, companionship or compassion, integrity. These are the things that can be used both in the workplace and with interaction with the customer. And there should be nothing there that says, well, maybe I need to be working on one of those more. These are things that are base plate values, right? And so we should, there should be nobody I ever took this slide to that doesn't have great confidence in all of their ability on all these subjects. But the ethical values can all be agreed upon. Can you tell me what the difference between right and wrong is, though? Because these answers vary. Like I said, cultural based, uh, nurture nature, what you grew up with, what you're thinking are the religious factors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, it's, every situation is different, but there are standards we can apply. Is it breaking a law? Okay, wrong. Okay, it's not breaking a law, but I wouldn't do it myself. Means it's unethical in my opinion. Still wrong, right? Uh, that was a great action and I want to do it for myself because I saw someone do it and it was successful. Okay, that's the right thing, right? I mean, what's the difference between right and wrong? It's hard to put into words though, the answer to that question. Does it all apply to all of us? Does does the same does my perception of right and wrong apply to you? No. Only down to laws. Only down to laws. Because yes, we both and laws. Yes. The next one. <laughs> we all we both have to abide my by the exact same law. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> Who makes the final decision about right and wrong? You're right. If we've broken if we brought our justice system into play here, then yes, our a, a court of our peers is gonna have to make that choice. But what if you witness a good friend do something and makes you question whether or not that was wrong? Did you fall, or like what, what if that happens? Do you have the right to make that judgment? The only decision you can make there is whether you still want to be a friend or not. Yes, I mean, uh, because... That person, do you want that person in your sphere you feel they're doing unlawful things or whatever. Well, yeah, if it's unlawful, yeah, so they, they do something and I'm thinking to myself, was that wrong? Well, let's say you witness a very close friend, someone you care about, do something wrong. You know it's wrong. What are two decisions I have? I can make one of two decisions. I can turn my head. <coughs> I can turn my head or I can engage, right? And you can make one of these, one or either of these decisions for a multiple of different reasons. Um, I'm gonna turn my head to protect family, I'm gonna engage because I care about him or something like that, but so what happens to me mentally on my, on my plane of ethics mentally 
if I turn my head. I know he just did something wrong. Well, your ethics are lowered. I just lowered my own ethics. I just reduced the standard of my own ethics by making his action just a little bit more okay in my head. Because it's wrong, I know it's wrong, but I just made it not wrong enough to wrap my friend out, or not wrong enough to tell the boss, right? If I make the decision to say, hey, why have you done this? I know it's wrong, why have you done it? To engage, to actually present yourself into the situation and learn more, or whistle blow or something like that. I want to engage. What have I done then on my ethics plan? I've upheld my value. I've yeah. even I've even strengthened my ethics. Yeah. Because what more do you need to make a decision? It's kind of a hard way to put that, but you know the best decisions are always made with information. But there's a middle piece there too. You might have seen that same action and maybe approach that person an hour later. And why do you do that? Da, da, da. Uh -huh. uh, the action may have already taken place, but you might challenge them later. Say, wait a minute. An hour, a day later? Or that's still me turning my head towards it. Yeah, uh, well, I, I okay. decided I needed to come talk to you today because I need to uphold my values. So. Okay, but okay, I'm walking through the grocery store and you spank your daughter. Okay, in my mind, uh, in my ethics, I mean, that's wrong. Okay? I'm saying it's wrong to physically spank a, a child any I mean, any time, but in the public, you can spank her. I'm going, I might see you later, that child's gone. I'm, I might uh, confront. <laughs> confront you and say, you know, why are you physically spanking your daughter and challenge you and everything else? Uh, I probably feel better about doing that, yeah. but I will. But I'm not going to challenge you right at that time because maybe I didn't see the whole story, even though I know I don't want you to spank the child. Yeah, but so there, there's there's yeah. leadway in there. Well, because you you decided to wait for the right <coughs> opportunity yeah. to engage. So just by engaging at any point in time you've upheld your values. Yeah. Well, there's a medium in there. But you're not engaging her to tell her how to run her life. You are gathering more information and, and right. seeing her opinion on why that happened and, and letting her know your opinion. An exchange of information is happening yeah. and you're able to make better decisions when you get more information. That's why there's a medium in it. There's yeah, it's well, not yeah. cut and dry. You know, yeah. Somebody's running out of the bank have a gun and a bank bag and you're standing there and you have the ability to stop them, are you going to go? Well, Am I going to risk my life for this some right people now? Are gonna, yeah. Some people are going to stop them right then and there and some are going to go, well, Decide I don't, 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 don't want to get involved. We have other people. Take care of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's, ethically, yeah, you should stop them, but there's always great, great area and everything. Mm. If it's like worst case scenario, bank robbery, and I decide that risking my life is not worth engaging this ethical dilemma, does me turning my head and turning my cheek in an in interest of self-preservation, is that unethical? Yeah, it still is. No, I think self-preservation is the one reason that I can turn my cheek and my ethics are still upheld. Yeah. I turn my cheek because my buddy is stealing. That lowers my ethics. Yeah. I turn my cheek because that guy has a gun and I, I want to self-preserve or I want to preserve my family. That's, that's not turning the cheek. That's taking action in a higher interest. I agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I understand that. But I'm not bad. Until you threw the family in there. But if your family was in harm. Exactly. I would not engage. I would protect. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying if, if there was a person with a gun and your family is in ability to be harmed by that person, I'm going to engage. Oh, oh, well, maybe the best form of protection is engagement. Put yourself between. Yeah. Well, because that counts too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of depends on what's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could turn a cheek, though, in interest of, of yeah, distance. I, I, you know what? I agree with 
Uh, Honest to God, nobody knows what they're going to do until they're in that position. Yeah, exactly. You can play the scenario in yeah. your head. Yeah. You know. Well, because I mean, that's why. It's actually happened. Yeah, our, 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 we, we, we live in a great country where we have a, plenty and plenty of people who are willing to sign on a piece of paper and say, I will run towards the danger. Yeah. Proud yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whether you're a firefighter or yeah, whether a you're a serviceman. When I was in the Marine Corps, and this was Thank you for your service. Yeah. You, you were, you were brainwashed basically. You, you, you were engaged. I don't disagree. You were, engaged. you were what? If you're in Vietnam, and, you know, and we basically engaged. I have a cousin went over, and uh, he engaged. There were 18 of them. He was the only one that came back alive. Yeah, we didn't he send missing, you to war with your family. He was missing two legs and one arm, but he came back alive. Yeah. But uh, you didn't join the Marine Corps thinking that you would run away from danger. You joined no, knowing uh, you would have to yeah. run towards it. But again, yes, it was a different time, and you were um, right. people that joined the services from 1942 on. Had different values. I get that too, because there was the draft. There was more of a protection of the U.S. Now, oh gosh, I don't, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I'm so proud for the people who decide they want to serve today, because yeah, yeah there's uh, there's so many of us who would, there's a lot of people you know, like my serve. generation. Yeah, I don't think uh, the best of the best. But that was the kind of an engagement. It's, yeah. Uh, the, the the running towards gunfire. The running yeah. into the burning building. These these are qualities that only certain people have. I just I just know if if you and I are walking down the street, somebody's going to insult them, and harm you. They're not going to. I'm standing. Yes. Yes. People I can walk you down an hour from now. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Because we had a little incident when we were on my granddaughter and I were on our trip. We were in one of the truck stop picking up some gas and stuff. She's a cute little thing. She's taller than me when I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this older guy kind of looked at her, and I whipped her <laughs> and gave him the look. Yeah. Uh, and he just hurried and he goes, God, Grandma, that works on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that that looked too terrible. <laughs> I said, well, you know, don't discount this five foot one. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I, I will do battle when it comes to yeah, and that's why I'm saying, you know, when a situation like that, uh, and again, especially after Bailey, you know, I was, I was going to go and surprise him. It was a Crooked River Ranch. Uh, I was going to go over there. It was all over TV and everything. I was going to go over and surprise him and visit him that night. Leave right from work and, and drive over there. And uh, you know, and I'm sitting there saying, you know, would Mitch have done that? Was there a roommate that killed him uh, or not? But I have died also. But I know I would have jumped in front of that bullet from the ground. So. It's a yeah, because that's hard things to think about. The would have, could have, should have stuff. Yeah, that's hard. But I have to say, I have not in this last. He's now serving two full life sentences without parole or appeal. That really, in all this time, I've not given myself over to anger towards him or you know, spend any time dealing on him yeah. because nothing is going to bring them back. You know, so I've had to focus on the living. Yeah. Um, you know, being there for my granddaughters, trying to be there for my daughter. You our know. loved ones are, are always going to be our most cherished. And we've used loved ones as, as, as an example in this class already a bunch of times, but yeah. it applies to strangers just the same as you got to there. Yeah. You as a stranger on the street, if I witness your life in clear danger and I feel like I can do something about that, then yeah, you're going to get the same treatment my loved one would get. Yeah. Because you're a fellow citizen and I can clearly see you're in danger and I could probably help with that. So let's do that. Yeah. I, I always thought I was a six foot two woman in a five foot one body because <laughs> I'll do things that a short person isn't expected to do. A uh, short people, oh, she can little, do she's awesome helpless, stuff. you know, she can't do this, she can't do that, but I don't feel that way in my head. It's good. It's <laughs> good. Sometimes not too smart about it. <laughs> right. Get ourselves in over our head. Um, so the competition. Ethics matter, industry, why the more, because this is a 
couple years old this presentation. I'm sure there's way more than 2,000 insurance carriers across the country at this point. Well, I don't know. <laughs> there may be a less. <laughs> no, you think? Because, yeah, maybe yeah, some maybe, of, maybe enough have been washed out in the last <laughs> while. And that second <laughs> ball point, I have to say, not so much now, more the stuff you're seeing is about service. Well, hopefully. You know, accident forgiveness. Because prices is gone, uh, it's being there. way more important. Yeah. That's hopefully. Hopefully, uh, features, advantages, and benefits come back. Hopefully. Because, no, it's all been in the last decade with commercials and, and, and yeah. digital advertising and just the ability to get a quote in the door has all been dependent on pricing for the last decade. It has all been narrowly focused on price. Which is the difference between what they call a hard market and a soft market. Ah, oh, good, good insight, yeah. Yeah, hard market, the prices is up and it's hard to place stuff. The soft market is starting to be a little easier. Prices are getting a little more even between all Even across the board, yeah. So then you got to sell yeah. the features and benefits. If Country Financial can't tell me any better than you can, it's the service difference that's going to pull me now, yeah. right? But no, the prices are so widely fluctuated and change so often right now that the GEICO needs to tell you how much you're going to save and that's what works versus I can tell you that you will be okay when you do anything, right? That should be the main goal of me as a consumer, shopping you for insurance. My main goal should be the fact that when something happens, I need to be covered, but instead it's pricing, which gets me focused on your minimal policies. Well, we hear a lot of that. I have yeah, but I also hear personal line stuff, people asking, how do they handle claims? You know, that's Good. a big deal now. Are Good. they quick? Do they are they fair? Are they on my side? Or are they just pay the claim and it doesn't matter if I'm at fault or not? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. especially on commercial Which is because, very common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on commercial side you have to explain. You know, sometimes these insurance companies are gonna cave because they're not gonna spend that money. Right. Mm -hmm. That hundred thousand or millions of dollars to defend you. Yeah. I mean, all the, the all the policies that I write for, like taverns and bars, which is, you know, one time we had about eighty percent of all, up, all of them pay in, in the valley. That's <laughs> yeah. a lot. But to your comment, it doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong. Somebody slips and falls, a medical, you got a standard five thousand dollars. Okay. And really, that five thousand is paid out. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to get an attorney. You know, I can come to you, and you can generate a letter and send to the insurance company such and such. Well, they're not going to challenge it. They write. They honestly, they write the check. Yep. Could it cost too much to litigate it? Yep. And it's not right. But yeah. You I just mean, swallow and accept it. Well, litigation is yeah. That that's the most expensive. But it can <laughs> still cost me as an insurance provider another. $2,000 to send a, a paid adjuster